What's going on guys? Sean here coming to y'all with a quick little video. Uh, it's looking like the Eagles finally made some moves uh, and Joel Embiid is the best basketball player on the planet. Argue with your mama. Before we get into it though, as always, if you guys are new here, please like, please subscribe. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. It's the best way you can help me. Um, I just want you guys to know if you're returning viewers, as always, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for returning to the channel. Um, you know, I appreciate y'all more than words can describe. So let's get into it. All right. So first things first, um, you know, because it's the shorter one. Joel Embiid is the best basketball player on the planet. Argue with your mama about it. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say he's the GOAT basketball player. I'm not going to sit here and say he's better than this guy or that guy. He is the best active basketball player in the NBA right now. That simple. We don't have to argue about that. We don't have to fight about that. You, it, It's true. I just, I don't know how you argue with it at all right now. He is on an absolute tear. You know, the team is garbage without him. And when he's on the floor, he scored 70 points and 18 rebounds and five assists and a block and a steal. You know, it, it just, it's unbelievable. His stat line for the season right now is better than his MVP stat line last year. He's potentially looking to be the first big man to lead the league in scoring uh, this many years in a row since maybe ever or the 70s, probably Wilt Chamberlain, you know, or some shit like that. But you know, it's a stat that's so outrageous that I just checked it and I, I'm already Im immediately like questioning if, if it's actually true or not, you know, like that's the kind of shit that Joel Embiid's been doing lately, you know, and it's just, it's an amazing time to be a 76er fan. It's an amazing time to be a basketball fan. I mean, even if you're not a 76er fan, I, you know, I wasn't a Heat fan. I wasn't a Cavalier fan. I'm not a Laker fan. But I still watch LeBron as much as I can because that's greatness and you should appreciate it. You should enjoy it, absorb it as much as you can while it's here because in 20 years, you're going to talk about it and people aren't going to believe you, you know, because there's never been a player uh, so dominant as LeBron, obviously, or this year, Joel Embiid, you know, so it's just about witnessing greatness and enjoying it. You know, it doesn't matter who you root for, uh, you know, what your team's like, you know, just if you enjoy ball, you know what I'm talking about, you know, it's just been an amazing year. So let's just go ahead and just uh, chalk it up to him winning the MVP again, unless, you know, they bullshit him with this whole, you know, games played to win the MVP shit, which is fucking hilarious to me, you know, basically just saying, you know, we don't want Joel uh, to win the chip, you know, to win the MVP, you know, because we know he's going to load manage through the season because he spends so much energy in the games he does play just absolutely fucking annihilating everybody you know hey, hey, it's neither here nor there that's a video for another time in another place but you know congratulations to Joel Embiid on his 70 point fucking performance the other day absolutely one of the craziest things I've ever witnessed uh in the NBA um you know it, it was just amazing and the team is amazing Nick Nurse is amazing the fans are amazing, and uh, I can't wait to get to the Wells Fargo Center to watch Joel do what Joel does. All right, moving on. With all that being said, we're going to kick it over to the Eagles. The Eagles finally pulled their heads out of their asses and fired some people. Is it the firings that we wanted? Yes and no. Um, is Nick still there? Yes. Uh, do we want him gone? Maybe. You know, it just... It's so hard to tell with Nick because last year he had two competent coordinators. Say what you will about either one. He had two competent coordinators and look what happened. This year, he did not look what happened. You know, to me, it's really that simple. It really is that simple to me. Um, Brian Johnson was no good at anything, not play calling not scheming uh he wasn't a player's coach because everybody turned on him quick as fuck if you notice while everybody was defending nick uh and defending this person and that person and defending themselves you know nobody really defended brian johnson um i don't know how y'all feel about that i i don't maybe i'm wrong 
Maybe I missed some interviews or something where they defended him, but I really don't remember anybody defending Brian Johnson at all this year. Um, so apparently they don't miss him and they're not going to miss him. Sean Desai was the wrong hire. Uh, uh, Denard, uh, fuck, what's his name? Denard Wilson, I, I don't know. The DB coach from last year who got snubbed on the job and went to the Ravens and is now their DB coach. It's something Denard or Denard something. I don't remember. I never remember his name. Um, he would have been the perfect hire last year. To everybody saying hire him this year, no, absolutely not. Because you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. Okay, first off, we need an adult defensive coordinator in here. We need an adult, okay? We don't need someone who's learning, who's on their way up, or, you know, thinks they're this, thinks they're that. I need proven track record. Everybody's saying, uh, go get this guy, go get that guy. You know, I don't want someone who just blitzes, and then their defense is shit, and it's like, well, we blitz a lot, you know, uh, high risk, high reward. No, I don't care about that shit. I want a D coordinator who understands situations, who understands when to blitz, how to blitz, how to cover, how to show blitz and drop into coverage, how to show coverage and bring a blitz. That's what I want. I want a fucking adult for once in my life as the Eagles defensive coordinator. You know, Jim Schwartz won us the Super Bowl, so I try my best not to talk too much shit about him, but he was the worst. That rotating cover two shit that he did all the time got us burnt all the fucking time. You know, outside of 2017, and there were times during 2017 when it happened too. Outside of 2017, Jim Schwartz's defensive scheme was dog shit. And I don't know why people defend him to this day. Oh, we won a Super Bowl. He gave up 500 fucking plus yards to Tom Brady. Oh, Tom Brady's the GOAT. He was throwing to fucking Hogan and Edelman and Amendola and fucking nobody. You know, we we gave up 500 yards to Brady with his worst weapons of his career. Do you understand that? You know, it just, I, I'm done with it. And then you go before him, Billy Davis. Billy Davis didn't know what the fuck he was doing. I swear he was just high all the time because he never had any idea what the fuck was going on. He had no instinct whatsoever on when to send a blitz, when not to send a blitz, man to zone. You know, it's just, it, every fucking coach we have, and Desai this year, playing everybody 8, 10, 12 yards off the ball, okay, and then wondering why everyone's getting beat underneath. You know, the reason Bradbury looks like shit and his PFF grades are shit is because so many easy completions in front of him that he starts biting on everything in front of him, and then they just started throwing over his head. Well, no shit he couldn't learn. It, he had no way to learn. One guy's telling him one thing, another guy's telling him another thing, and then he just stopped giving a shit at some point because Philly fans can't keep their fucking mouth shut, including me. Yeah, you were trash this year. Sorry, bro. Um, you know, it's it just, it's ridiculous. And then, you know, Slay, uh, Slay is just, he's got to shut the fuck up, you know? It's it just, if he could shut up, it's like Deadpool in that old Wolverine movie. If we could sew your mouth shut, you'd be the perfect weapon. Uh, that's Slay. I'm sorry, that is Slay right there, but he's not nearly as funny as Ryan Reynolds, so it's not cute, it's not charming, we just need him to shut the fuck up and play, but Slay has been good for us through all the coordinators, which tells you that if you put a real adult coordinator back there, someone who he can, you know, who understands what a number one corner can do, someone who understands, you know, what Slay is capable of, then you'll get to see an even better version of Slay, and whoever's playing on the other side will have a lot of help over top, a lot of help underneath, and you don't have to worry about it as much. If we bring back Bradbury, he's not going to look nearly as bad with a better coordinator as he did this year. <clears throat> Matt Patricia, I have nothing to say. I've never liked Matt Patricia. I didn't like bringing Matt Patricia in this year. When he took over, he was worse. You could tell the players didn't want nothing to do with him. You know, Slay just exited stage left as soon as Patricia took over as coordinator, which I thought was hilarious. Nobody said shit about that. But, you know, he just immediately said, I guess I'm going to head out, you know, and didn't come back until the last game and then didn't do nothing in the last game. But, uh, you know, and it, it just, you know, 
I want to bring in Riverboat Ron and Eric Bieniemy. I think Bieniemy is what Jalen Hurts needs. He's what the offense needs. He's a creator. Um, and I think Riverboat Ron is a great D coordinator, terrible head coach, uh, needs to stay away from the offensive side of the ball, um, has a lot of the same issues Sirianni has as a head coach. But as a D coordinator, he's always done well. The past couple years, he's done well. This year, before the change was made, uh, and they had a fire sale on their defense, they were not looking good on defense. Uh, could be him, could be the D coordinator. But when they had the fire sale till the end of the year, they were fourth in total defense. Uh, you know, I don't know what that means. You know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, ignore it. Doesn't matter to me. But um, it is something to take into account. You know, that with literally no pass rushers um, and a completely depleted team, you know, the last couple weeks of the season, he was able to get them to fourth uh, in total defense. So, you know, I think those are my guys right now. If I see some other picks that come out that look better or someone that makes more sense, you know, we'll talk about them. Uh, obviously, I'll look into everything. I'm going to look into everything. I'm obsessed with this team. You guys know that. So if there's any news or reports, I'm going to be all over it. But you guys know I'm not going to cover it until there's validity to it, until there's something that I can stand on. Um, I'm not going to come report every single thing that comes out, but I will report the stuff that sounds like something that's legit uh, and could actually happen. So with all that being said, tell me what you guys think about Joel Embiid's amazing amazing run this year tell me guys what you guys think uh the eagles should do coordinator wise uh do you think it was a mistake to fire sirian or to keep sirianni do you think we should have fired him um you know just comment down below guys if you've made it to this point in the video please like please subscribe drop a comment i love y'all so fucking much and until the next time peace